This is the first tutorial possibly of a new series that we're going to do here on this channel. What we're going to do is build a CSGO like video game inside of Unity. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is just bring this map inside of Unity. First of all, to bring this object on Unity, it has to be as a FBX file. I'll make sure to leave that down in the description as always. But this is what you should be looking for if you want a different map for this video game. So if I show in Explorer, make sure that your file has a extension .fbx. To bring this into your scene, the first thing you want to do is go to your scenes, create a folder, name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it new scene just to show you. And then inside that folder, create a new scene. After creating that scene, head on over to it and you should have a empty scene with a camera and a directional light. We're going to delete the camera and we're just going to leave the directional light. Next thing we want to do is go to our Mirage folder and grab in the FBX file. What you're going to do is just grab it and drop it into your scene. You should have something like this. Now, at the moment, the shades are not working as intended, but that's not, that's not a problem. We're going to fix that just a little bit. First thing first you want to do is unpack this prefab. Right click and unpack. And the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this, these squares. Once you've done that, what you want to do is go to your window rendering and lightning settings. In here, all we have to do is press this generate lightning. You don't have to press anything in here, just generate lightning. And now we have our shadows working perfectly fine. Now, if you're having a issue in here that this wall is not casting shadows, all you have to do to fix that is go to your lightning at where you cast shadows. Make sure that two sided is checked. And now we now it's going to cast shadows from both sides. To fix these little lights, there is another object in here. We're going to do the same thing. And then to fix these little ones, we actually have to go to our directional light and decrease the BS. So if you decrease that to zero, it's going to get rid of it completely. So that's how you fix that. Next thing is to add collision to these objects. So there is obviously the way that going one by one and adding colliders, but what we're going to do is select every object in this scene, making sure to deselect the directional light making sure to unfold every folder you have while having everything selected go to your add components and add a mesh collider okay now everything should have a collider attached to it and now if we try to play the game and test if these collisions are working make sure you have the standard assets which is free in the unity store go to the standard assets and in the first person camera controller, just drag and drop the FPS controller. Make sure that your controller has a collider to it. In this case, we have a capsule collider. So in my case, I'm just going to make it a little bit more smaller. All I'm going to do is hit play. Okay. Now our game works perfectly fine. And now let's get to the interesting part of this tutorial, the occlusion calling. Now, as I've explained in my other tutorials, for the occlusion calling to take effect, the object has to be static. Now, similar, similar to the mesh collider method that I did earlier, we're going to do that the same. We're just going to check static and click yes, change the children to. Now, every element should be a static. The very next thing we want to do is go to the window rendering and occlusion calling and then all you have to do is in here is click bake okay once you've done the occlusion calling we should have some blue squares in our game and now let's test it
Okay, now we can see the calling taking place. And as you might have noticed, our frame rate just went from like 300 to 500 just by using this occlusion calling. The next thing and the last thing we want to do in this tutorial is add in a little bit of post processing. To add in post processing, you have to go in window and package manager. And in your advanced, make sure you have show preview packages checked. If you scroll down, you should find a post processing window. And here in my case, I have already installed it, but you should see like a button in here that says install. And then in the main camera, in your inspector, you're going to need two components in here. One is going to be the post processing layer and the other one is going to be post processing volume. In order for this to work, you will need a layer. Now this layer has to be defined as a new layer. I'm just going to call it post processing. And now we have a post processing layer and the next thing we want to, we want to add is a profile if you don't have any profile you have to click new and just create a brand new profile in that profile we can add in obviously effects after creating a new profile we're gonna go to add effects unity and ambient occlusion we're gonna enable and increase the intensity a little bit next i'm going to add in some bloom and the last thing i want to do into this scene is make the sun a little bit more orange color and there we have it we have a fully playable csgo map inside of unity 